Are those uh, reports from Mark Kriegel accurate? He's talking about $150 million. Guys are going to make $75 million each. Is he uh, on the right track? Uh, I don't think everything that's been reported lately in, in many different areas is, is entirely correct. Uh, I mean, I've not had a conversation with Mark Kriegel about it. Obviously, he works with ESPN. He probably knows Bob Arum. So, you know, I think that those kind of things are better off being being confidential within within the space of the deal. Um, we're just concentrating at the moment on getting the final site B contract signed, which is called on Saturday night, calls on Sunday night with respective lawyers and teams, you know, drafts, final drafts going backwards and forwards. So I really, you know, I know that everyone's getting a little bit frustrated, the fans, and, you know, they keep saying to me, you said Friday, you said a week, and, like, you just got to let us do our thing and know that we can't be doing any more. We're in a tremendous place. I, I think, again, you know, like, we're, we're almost there. I'm not going to be announcing stuff. I know the date, you know, I know the venue, but... I'm not going to be announcing stuff until everybody's happy because we know that it's two different teams in here as well, you know. So, like, some people say things, some people didn't like what was said. I don't really want to get into that whole ego thing of screwing up a deal because someone didn't like something that someone said. So, I'm staying quiet, I'm working hard behind the scenes, and, like, you know, we're, like I said, we're in a great place. I, I want to touch on uh, uh, Ryan Garcia. Look, you've had fighters the pull out of fights for a bunch of reasons, right? All promoters have had. This is a different situation, you know? He was very candid about going through something and needing to step away from boxing. Your first reaction when you read Ryan Garcia's uh, post? Um, very brave. You know, that's, that's I think, the first thing. Um, it didn't come as a big surprise to me, to be honest with you. I always felt that. You know, I mean, he talked about it before, hadn't he? You know, he talked about his anxiety issues, his sort of demons and stuff like that. And I think that he lives in a world where we all do, where you're scrutinized by social media and Instagram and, and you know, online comments can sometimes be online abuse. But really, like everybody that's out there trying to chase their dream also has to remember the importance of looking after yourself and your own health and your own well-being and sometimes you can get too caught up in the dream or the hustle to kind of worry about that so it's like yeah i don't feel great you know I'm, no, no, no listen pull yourself together you know we've got to do this work you know, work work go to the gym do this and i thought it was brave of ryan garcia because he must have known that he's going to come under a little bit of criticism, right? And actually, I think the response has been fantastic, really supportive, you know, not just from the boxing community, but from the general public as well, because I think they're getting more sympathetic with this point now, with this issue. But I felt that, you know, from a lot of his comments recently and looking at his social media and stuff like that, that, you know, this wasn't the, the sort of behavior of someone that was happy and comfortable within himself, you know? So th there's more to life than boxing. There's more to life than fighting. So he's got to get himself well and, and prepared. And it's dangerous, you know, to go into any kind of fight um, not prepared, not emotionally prepared, not mentally prepared. So I think he deserves a lot of credit because in the world, the machismo world of boxing, like it's quite unusual for someone to come out and say, I have anxiety, I have you know, mental uh, problems or issues that I need to resolve. So I think he should be really commended by that. For that. Yeah. All right, Eddie, I just want to jump uh, into some Dana White talk really quick. Uh, Jake Paul, we touched on Jake Paul earlier. But after the uh, Masvidal Usman fight, you know, he was asked about Jake Paul and he kind of went off on Trill. I'm not sure if you heard it, but he said the numbers were, they were full of ish, right? That those numbers aren't real. It's a circus. Uh, they didn't do 1.5 million. And then he also said that uh, Jake Paul is getting hand-picked opponents. I mean, he only has three fights. Don't prospects also get hand-picked opponents? It's just a, a normal thing, right? But how does he know? How would he know if the numbers that Chilla put out there aren't true? I mean, you're a promoter. You deal with numbers and pay-per-views. Talk a little bit about that. I don't think that... I don't think that the numbers are true, to be completely honest with you. Um, but I'm sure it did pretty well. 
I mean, Jake Paul did a tremendous job pushing that fight. Like, whatever you think of Jake Paul, he's a fantastic content provider. He knows how to promote himself and the events. I said to Dana White when I saw him the other week, you yeah, know, we were, we were, I was me, Dana White, Billy Joe Saunders, there's a couple of other people sitting around, and we were talking about the Jake Paul fight. And I said to him, I'm pretty sure I've said on this show, I said, this won't go one round. I said, Jake Paul will knock out Ben Askren in one round, like, without fail. No, no, you know, this guy, he's an Olympian, he's an Olympian, you know, and Dana was like quite convinced. I said, no, no, Dana, he can't box, like, he cannot box. I mean, one, he's in horrendous shape, but two, he cannot box at all. I said, Jake Paul can fight a little bit, right? He's, he's better than a lot of pros that I've seen, not many, but... You know, so I think that in terms of the numbers, Jake Paul's going to give you the numbers that he wants to give you. So I don't really know. Again, it's another conversation where everyone's right. debating numbers. But number two, uh, is Triller a circus and a freak show? Yeah, it is. It's a complete circus and freak show. But it's also a bit of entertainment, isn't it? It's a little bit lighthearted. It's not real boxing. It's not championship boxing. It's not for the purist. But... They're doing their thing. It's entertainment. And like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I just think anybody that's investing money in the sport, anyone that's trying, anyone that's pushing, look, Dana White shouldn't really worry about Triller. Dana White's got a fantastic business. And, you know, that show he put on on Saturday, it was absolutely first class. I mean, first class. You know, I look at that. The energy in the arena, you know, proper fans back in Miami indoors. But that was, you know, Usman knockout. You know, a couple of the women's fights were sensational. Like, you know, I think there's room for everybody, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't really ever believe too much that Jake Paul says, <laughs> but he's an entertainer. And, you know, like you said, he's had three fights. Like, yeah. next, who knows? He might fight a boxer. Yeah. But, you know, tr I think Triller is designed to be a circus. I don't think it's designed to be anything else. So yeah. circuses do well sometimes as well. Okay, <laughs> lastly, can we... Can we get something about Shields versus Marshall? Is it really in the works or what? How far are we? It's definitely in the start. works. I mean, like, it's to be honest, Brett, like, it's the only fight for both girls. Let's be honest. Like, give me another fight for both girls, realistically, that, that makes you sense. really wanted. No. Right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Clarissa's boxing or doing her MMA in June. Savannah Marshall's going to box in July. We want to make that fight for October. You know, I said to Dimitri Salita, I was with Savannah Marshall at the weekend in Barcelona. We should do one fight in the UK, one fight in America, or vice versa. There's no reason why those two fights, it's still, it's the biggest fight for both. So let's lock in two fights. It's a great fight for women's boxing. We're really, 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 really keen to make that fight. And I will have conversations with Mark Taffet and Dimitri Salita this week. Uh, one last thing, Eddie. May 1st, this card is huge. I don't know how oh, you can huge. afford no, no no audience and you can still afford to put a card like this on. So kudos to well, you. That's, well, that's a good point, Hack, <laughs> because, you know, over in the UK, it's on pay-per-view. You know, over here, I'm very, very, very generous. It's only 25 bucks for pay-per-view. I know you guys do your 80 bucks thing, right? Whatever. <laughs> so, But over here, the British fans always give me a lot of heat. As you said, no fans, right? No tickets. Yet, Chisora Parker, Katie Taylor against Natasha Jonas, Dimitri Bivo against Craig Richards, Chris Eubank Jr. against Marcus Morrison, James Tennis against Saffron, Campbell Hatton, Scott Fitzgerald. I mean, it's a, probably the, one of the biggest cards we've put on. It's the card of the year, massive card this Saturday on Sky in the UK and live on the zone everywhere else around the world. It's going to be a really, really good fight. Great heavyweight fight. One of the biggest fights in women's boxing and, and some other big world championship fights as well.